Hi all, welcome to my channel. This video is about AWS AI Practitioner Certification Exam. As you know, this certification was recently introduced and this covers mainly topics from Gen AI. So basically Gen AI Basics plus Amazon Bedrock related services and some of the services from Amazon SageMaker. If you are planning to start learning Gen AI, this would be a very good starting point because when you are preparing for this exam, you will be actually covering the Gen AI Basics. So I would suggest all of you to go for this particular certification you will have your certification and you will have your basic Gen AI lessons as well at the end of it. As part of this video, I will talk about some useful links. I will talk about how I prepared for the exam, what are the resources I used and I will also talk about the specific topics from where I got the questions. And just like my other certification related videos, here also I would suggest that you base your preparation mostly on the practice test. Of course, you can go through the free training material available from AWS. After that, you focus on practice test and at the end of the practice test, you should analyze the answers, especially the wrong answers and you should update your notes. You can go through that notes on the last day or the previous day and that should be sufficient. Okay, now with that let me show you my preparation plan and the resources I used and let me also talk about the specific topics from where I got the questions. Let's begin. Okay, my two simple steps for exam preparation is first familiarize yourself with the topics for the exam and then take your practice test. You may take two tests or three tests according to the difficulty level of the exam. You may increase the number of tests, but after each test, you should analyze the wrong answers and update your notes. That is how you can prepare for any AWS certification. So for AWS AI certification, we will start with the familiarization. That's what I also did. You can actually go through the official training. See here is the official training. It is available in Skill Builder. I will provide the links to the official training. It is video based training plus there are exam style questions and answers given. So you can enroll for this and go through the material. So it gives fundamentals of AI, ML, generative AI fundamentals, applications of foundation models. So this will cover most of the topics which you need to know. So you start with the official training, skim through the videos and take notes. If you need additional study materials, you can go through maybe tutorials, Dojo exam study guide, only if, if you really require this. I haven't used this one, but I'm just suggesting this in case if you need to go through additional material. Then any Udemy course, for example, course from Stephen Marek is actually good. This course is actually good. You can use the course or only the practice test. Below what you see is the practice practice test. So you can either go for the course plus the practice test or only the practice test. And there are other courses as well. You can explore it, but I'm just suggesting these two are actually good. Then keep the initial preparation short. Don't try to spend one week, two week only in reading these material. That is not required. Just two, three days initial preparation is sufficient enough. Once you do that, you can go through the practice test. I suggest Stephen Marek's practice test. There are three full length tests and in each of the tests, there are 85 questions. In the actual exam, there are only 65 questions. So I found it very useful. I took only test one and test two. Test three I did not use, but I found it very useful. So you can also try that. Then one once those two tests are done, or if you want to do all the three tests, once all the three tests are done, you can go into official practice test and you have to enroll for that and take that test. There are 20 questions and 30 minutes time. You can see how much you are able to answer. If you are able to get like 11, 12 correct, then you can go for your final exam. And in case if you need additional free tests, etc., there are WizLabs free tests. I will give you the link in the video description. I'm not going to that particular page. And I thought I will give you the scores which I got in the practice test. I took two practice tests from Stephen Marek in Udemy and then the official practice test and then the final exam. So I got 78% in the first one. And please note that it is very easy, very simple. So you will also find it easier to score marks. And I would tell you one thing that Stephen Marek's question length is actually lengthier than the actual actual exam. In Stephen Marek's test, actually the questions are little lengthier. Second test, I got 82 percentage and in the official practice test, I got 85 percentage. And when I went for the final exam, I got 84 percentage. Usually I get more than the practice test, but this time, yeah, there was an exception, but still you can see that everything is in that particular range. So overall it went well, both the preparations and the final exam went well for me. Strategy, if you have some basics of AI ML, then one week is 
is enough for you to prepare and i am assuming that you are familiar with aws in general so if you can spend two hours per day for a week you will be able to take this exam and you can claim 30 minutes extra accommodation if applicable if you are not an english speaker you can claim that 30 minutes and look for keywords in the question such as cost effective require no infrastructure management solution with least effort etc i had questions which used each of these question steps there will be one or two answers which are close enough but then these question steps will actually determine which is the final answer as i told you already there were no questions which were lengthy and there were out of the 65 questions only three were multi-answer questions i completed my first pass in 60 minutes there were four questions flagged but i did not change the answers to any of them and i took some 12 minutes for completing the review and the exam was done now let me quickly talk about the key question areas or the topics from where i got the questions i will not try to answer these questions i will just mention what were the topics so you can go ahead and read it so that you will learn and you can be prepared so prompt management is the first topic I'm explaining here. What is to be included in few short examples, whether it is user intent or user messages and the actual response, etc. If you understand about few short, you will be able to answer that question. It is pretty straightforward. And there was a question about an image was created by a text to image model, but the image being created was very different from prompt. So how can you align the prompt and the image better? So that was one question. As I said, I'm not discussing the answers. It is for you to go and figure out the answers different responses required for different age groups when the users are asking questions but if a person with 25 years of age is asking the question the answer will be in a specific way and if a 55 year old person is asking the same question answer will be different so how do you manage that whether you will do continued pre-training or fine-tuning or prompt management how to ensure companies tone and style in chatbot responses so how do you do that try to find out the answer for that then security related there were a few questions if you understand what is guardrail there was a question which you will be able to answer so that was a pretty straightforward question on guardrails then choose the use case in which client will have maximum level of security ownership this is also pretty straightforward if you are actually developing your own foundation models from scratch of course your your security ownership will be higher but again please go ahead and read that then there were questions about vpc endpoints for s3 and private link there were two questions on that please try to understand what these concepts are how to mitigate potential fraud attacks from an ip address think about how you can answer that using large language model regarding inference to get more consistent response should we reduce or increase the inference parameter temperature so that was one question it is straightforward but you'll have to read about the concept of temperature the knowledge basis and rag there was question about that identify the activity which happens in in inference if you understand the concept of inference you will be able to answer that and rag pipeline what are the activities which can be done through offline batch processing and when you understand the process of rag you will be able to answer this then asynchronous inference you have to choose between batch infer- inference asynchronous inference and real time inference so there was question about asynchronous inference and evaluation metrics blue and bird score there were two questions on that for interactive low latency inferences which method we will use whether it is real time or asynchronous or batch inference so you can see that that particular topic there were more than one question and regarding pricing what impacts the price of an fm model whether it is the inference parameters or whether it is the number of tokens in the output etc again you have to read it up when there is no consistent workload and client don't want to give any long-term commitments which pricing method to use so basically you should understand what is on demand and what is provision throughput then you will be able to answer that question in, with respect to training when you have unlabeled data to be used for improving the model which method you will use whether you will use continued pre-training or fine-tuning or prompt engineering so the keyword here is unlabeled data then for domain adaptation you have a foundation model which is trained on generic topics but now you want to adapt it for your specific domain maybe healthcare or maybe telecom or whatever it may be so how do you go about that then decision trees there was a question about that basically it was based on the fact that decision trees can improve the transparency in ml models it actually very clearly documents how the decision is made so there was a question on that then you have to identify a particular use case a particular ml model use case was given you have to identify whether it is supervised unsupervised or reinforcement learning use case which instance type has less environmental impact whether it is c or g type or trn type etc when you read about trainium and inferentia the two new 
EC2 instance types, you will get the answer to this question. Then to synthesize additional data, which is the method which we can use. There was a question about that. So please read about generative adversarial network. You will be able to answer that question. Then exploratory data analysis versus feature engineering. You have to understand the difference between these two so that you can answer the question related to that. At least two questions were there regarding exploratory data analysis. How to improve overall accuracy during training by increasing the number of epochs or there are some actions listed you have to identify which is the most appropriate one. Chatbot. Continuous improvement based on client feedback. Which training method will you use? In a chatbot when you are actually using it, customers are giving feedback, positive as well as negative. For the runtime improvement of the chatbot, how will you use that feedback and what will be the training method, whether it is supervised training or reinforcement learning, etc. Then other AWS tools and services such as Comprehend, what is it being used for, whether you can use it for sentiment analysis, etc. Comprehend, couple of questions were there. Textract, one question was there. Audit Manager, one question was there. QuickSight was the last question I remember. And then S3 related question was there. Where do you store your data set etc tool used for access control iam or identity center etc you should know what service you can use for access control then regarding bedrock why open search service is suitable for a vector database read up about vector database as well as open search service you will be able to answer this then there was a question about transfer learning and most of these questions if you understand the concept you will be able to answer it is not a twisted question straightforward questions only were there bedrock agent what is it being used for there was a use case which you had to correctly identify which can be done by agent. Perform sentiment analysis on the return customer reviews which tools can be used. There was a question on that. Enable model invocation logging. Regarding the importance of model invocation logging enablement there was one question. Tool or service used to track who is accessing bedrock. A straightforward question. Then Amazon Q developer use case related there was a question. So you should be very clear about Amazon Q developer, Amazon Q enterprise etc. Then under SageMaker we had questions about SageMaker model card, model monitor, then SageMaker canvas, SageMaker clarify, a couple of questions were there and feature store functionality there was a question. So all these are important and once you understand these services you will be able to answer. Then there was a question about what are tokens. If you understand the definition of token you will be able to answer that question and from the given four use cases you have to identify which is an example of hallucination. Then identify an example as plagiarism. Generative AI use case from the four choice. Basically it listed some four different AI use cases and you have to identify which is the one which is generative AI use case. Then chain of thought prompting. There was a question to identify the use case. So if you understand what is chain of thought prompting then you will be able to answer that. Multi-model embedding model versus multi-model generative model. So there was a question where you need to understand the difference between these two so that you can answer that. Then responsible AI there was a question about fixing bias. One or two questions. Then about fairness there was a question. So these were the topics from where I got the questions. I did not discuss the answers. It is for you to go and read these topics and find out. And I said the questions are very simple and straightforward. If you know the concept, you will be able to answer these questions. I hope you found this video useful. I wish you all the very best for your exam. And once you complete the exam, please come back here and add your experience as part of the comments so that it will be useful for other test takers. Okay, goodbye.